As you can see right here, we have a familiar case, and you already seen it, but not in this particular version. They did show it at Computex this year, and it's going to be quite uh, quite interesting because they did something different a bit. It's not drastical, of course, but it's something that some of you guys might really appreciate. We're talking here about XPG Invader X BTF, which means that it supports all BackConnect motherboards and it kind of goes quite nicely because you have loads of space at the back, as I mentioned in the prior case that I reviewed, it has loads of space at the back to really reorganize all the cables quite nicely to have a nice, decent and visually appealing front part of the case, which in this type of fish tanks, it's well appreciated to be honest. So in this case, what you get inside when we're talking about the fans stock, we have five addressable RGB 3-pin DC fans, of which we have four on the side, well, basically three on the side, which are already reversed, one here at the bottom, on, somewhere in front of the power supply shroud, and one regular 120 at the back. So they're all 120, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the cool thing is, at the back, you can add a 140. That is really nice because it creates more exhaust. Let's put it this way. On top, of course, you can fixate a 360 radiator. As you can see, I placed the Levante X360 addressable RGB and it fits perfectly just the way it is. No need to adjust anything except if you want to match the fans. That's the only thing that you could have done. Now, there is loads of stuff inside the accessory box and one of the main features that this case has, and I mentioned that prior, is the vertical adjustment for the PCI slots. So what you could do is untie four screws and use the other plate that comes inside that accessory box, place it here in the same position and get four ex expansion slots for your PCI GPUs which also means that the GPU is nicely separated from the tempered glass. There's like five centimeters of distance for a three slot GPU to the tempered glass. Outstanding, I do have to say. And even the thermals are better. So yeah, this kind of goes into that point where this case really does have it all. Now, let's go into something else. Um, there is a possibility to remove side and front tempered glass. But before you do that, you have to remove the top panel. When you remove the top panel, you, ha you have the possibility to remove the side tempered glass. You have two thumb screws here on the side and you have to lift it upwards. This is really good because it has four locking positions for the tempered glass plus the thumb screws. And for the front tempered glass, even though, uh, even though it's on four pegs, you have to untie two additional screws on the back side. So you have to remove the back side panel. But this comes, even though that is a bit of a fuss when you do have to remove or just to add RAMs, change RAMs, add SSD or whatever you want to do, you do have to go a bit further just to remove that. But the securement, the securing of the tempered glass on this case is outstanding and you don't have to worry about anything. Now, the, the thing about this build and what I did here, I used MSI Z790 Project Zero because that's the only BackConnect motherboard that I have. And uh, that means I used Intel Core i7-14700K. So it will we will have a different uh, benchmarks in this build compared to the last Invader X, which wasn't a BTF, of course. But regardless of that, wh what we else have is a plate here for the power supply. So you can connect the power supply to that plate and push it inwards. You have loads of space here in this compartment right here which gives you a possibility to stuff all the cables inside that are unnecessary because after all, no cables are seen on the front. So you don't have any extra length to, let's say, use up, use up all the cables. So you'll have a nice cable management, right? Everything is happening at the back. So that's really good. Talking about the power supply shroud, we have two uh, threads that are used for securing the GPU with the PCI riser so it doesn't flex, so it doesn't move or whatever. But if you go with the regular horizontal position of the GPU, then you can place two 120 fans and you get screws for those inside the box, which is great because some cases, some manufacturers don't actually add those screws with the case. When we're talking about the top part, since we don't have a bar and we have a seamless design when we're talking about the visual aspect of the case because two tempered glasses are not interacting with any bars in the middle, you don't have any flex here. 
But the thing is, if you really use a lot of force, you could bend the top. That's it. So, of course, nobody uses force when we're talking about, uh, I don't know, installing anything uh, in general and pushing it towards, uh, downwards, upwards or anything similar to that. You have one rivet holding this part, this part right here and the second one is right here. But that is connected completely with the radiator parts that hold the radiator and the front part doesn't have any rivets. It's directly connected to the whole chassis. So the only thing that you're actually doing is flexing the entire steel chassis. That comes to a point where the steel is a bit thinner than usual, which comes to a point of the thickness and everything. But all in all, when we take into consideration the final finish and everything all together, it's quite nice, I do have to say. The only thing is, if you do use force, it will bend. I mean, let's be honest, if you use force on any case, it will bend, depending on the thickness of the steel. So it comes to that uh, correlation. So yeah, I just wanted to state that because usually I mention uh, if it has flex or it doesn't have flex, this one doesn't, but if you use force, you will bend it. So I don't know, just be careful. Don't do that, simple as that. But visual aspect of the case is outstanding. It's really, I'm really digging the whole design. And of course, if you go with vertical GPU and if you want to go with a custom loop, you can go on the side radiator 360 without a problem and have two 360 radiators with the GPU and you can place a pump or whatever you want to go here instead of this fan or just place it on the fan. Because let's be honest, the RTX 4000 series GPUs have a shorter PCB than the actual cooler, so you won't be having this size right here. Now, let's go quickly with configuration. And uh, since I mentioned we have 360 on top, 360 on the side. On top, you can go with 3120 or 2140 fans. At the back, 1120 or 1140. Power supply shroud, 1120. The bottom, where you already have one fan near the power supply shroud, you can go either with this one or with 140. And on the side, you can go with 3120. IO panel, what we have here is power on button, reset button, two USB 3.2 type A, four pole jack for your microphone, 3.5 millimeter. And we have USB type C, 3.2. It supports uh, ATX, micro ATX, and mini ATX motherboards, but for the back connect, uh, it supports only ATX and micro ATX. You have a possibility to mount uh, three 3.5 inch hard drives or three 2.5 inch SSDs. Then we go with the clearance. So the GPU can go up to 400 millimeters without the side radiator installation, 270 with uh, side radiator installation. But that doesn't account when the GPU is in vertical position. Because if you go with vertical GPU, you get loads of space for the side radiator and the fans, which means up to 9.5 centimeters. This is a bit of a tight squeeze because the GPU will be right close to the fans or whatever you're placing uh, first, but the clearance that you don't have to worry about is nine centimeters. Then we have a CPU cooler height up to 175 millimeters and power supply length at 240. Now the benchmarks, we have the CPU running in Ada 64 Extreme Edition at 87 degrees with the clock speed 5,500 megahertz. Let's be honest, this CPU runs constantly 5,500 megahertz and that's it. GPU went up to 65. So if you take into consideration all the prior tests and uh, what I mentioned, placing a tempered glass here on the side, the GPU having been quite not that close as usual to the tempered glass, 65 is outstanding thermal for the vertical GPU. And then we go with uh, Cinebench uh, scores and thermals and clock speeds. 89 throughout the whole 10 benchmarks, 5500 MHz as I already said throughout everything. And then we have scores which are 34, 1412 and it goes uh, even up to 34,532 where I would say an average is at 34,450. Now for the price tag I have the links in the description so you can check out the prices and everything all together and where to buy it and order it. Uh, the price in Australian dollars is 200 and when we take into consideration other fish tanks and other cases in this form factor and when we convert that money into euros and dollars that's 120 euros you get four fans five fans sorry five fans that actually have addressable rgb connection and dc can be eventually regulated but they aren't even that loud so that's a positive thing so i would say 120 euros for such a case that can go with vertical mount you get this additional accessory 
I think that's quite all right. And as I said, taking all the other into consideration, I'm, of course, 99 would be outstanding price. Let's be honest. But we can't always have what we want, unfortunately. And uh, this is uh, the thing where 120 is quite solid. I would, it would be better if the steel was a bit thicker, just or at least harder, so you can't push it and force it and to create that, uh, what I said, it's not a flex, it's just using too much force. But altogether, when we take a visual aspect and all the connections on the IO ports, BTF, loads of space at the back, five fans already pre-installed, everything all together, I think that's quite all right. Quite all right, I do have to admit. And it looks nice all together. So yeah, not much, not too much drastical movements from the past case, but we get uh, BTF, and uh, that's for some of you guys that might appreciate it more than your regular connections. And it kind of saves up the money for custom sleeved cables. If you, since you have a nice visually uh, appealing case, you might either go with custom sleeved cables or no cables visible whatsoever. The links are in the description as already stated, so you can check out uh, the case in those certain regions and hopefully when the invader x btf comes to other regions i'll place the other links uh, as well or if i find it in the meantime before publishing this video i'll add those uh, as well so you can check it out and that'll be all for today guys so the links are in the description don't forget to sub don't forget to click the like button notification bell and i'll see you next time definitely thanks for watching bye bye